Howie Weinberg is a legend in the mastering world. He's mastered Metallica, Nirvana, The Smashing Pumpkins, Red Hot Chili Peppers, just to name a few. Masters that he's worked on have over 25 billion streams. And I've had the great pleasure of working with him for the past, uh, well, the better half of the last decade. So I'd like to share with you today the three most important lessons I've learned about mastering from Howie Weinberg. It's the analog vlog. It's a vlog, analog. <laughs> Imagine for a moment you're a carpenter building a house, but every time you reach for a hammer, you pick up a different hammer. Some of the hammers are bigger, smaller, heavier, lighter. Maybe the grip's different on one than the other. How consistent do you think you're going to be at driving in a nail? The first lesson I learned from Howie is to select a very short list of highly versatile tools, learn them intimately, and then use them on every master. Basically, don't go chasing the dragon of trying every new 1176 emulation that hits the market. Just find a few brands that you like and trust and stick to those. The way that I've implemented this system into my mastering studio is I have one of three EQs that I choose from. One of three compressors, one of three limiters, one of three saturators. I basically have three of each item and I only use those three. For each category, I would say one of these three is characteristically neutral. Uh, one of them would be bright or forward, and the other would be warm or vibey. Now there's a point of diminishing returns for a great many things. Working out, uh, practicing an instrument, learning a new thing. Essentially, after a certain amount of time, if you put in more work, you, s you do not get a desirable return. This is very true for mastering. The second lesson that I learned from Howie is not to spend too much time on any one master. I would say there's a roughly 15 to 30 minute window where a song that you're working on is fresh enough that you can deliver that outside perspective that you've been hired to give. After that, you're officially involved in the project and you might not have the fresh perspective it takes to deliver the results that a song needs to get over the finish line. Another thing to consider here is that most mastering engineers charge by the project, not by the hour. So spending more time per song directly translates to less money. And of course, if you are charging by the hour and this person can get it done in 30 minutes and you're getting it done in four hours, well, who am I gonna hire? There's also no correlation between spending more time on a song and getting less revisions for that song. Like if you spend half an hour versus four hours on a song, is the four hour version of this master eight times less likely to get a revision on it? No. So I think the best way to implement time management into your system is to get yourself like a Pomodoro clock or, you know, just use the timer on your phone. Set a timer for 30 minutes, start mastering. When the timer goes off, stop, bounce, send it to the client. If you don't believe me, try this. Bounce your master after 30 minutes, then keep working on it for however long you want. Let's say four hours again, I don't know. Then when you're completely satisfied, what I want you to do is bounce out what I would consider to be your overanalyzed master. And I want you to compare that to the instinctual master. I would venture to guess that nine out of 10 times, instinctual masters will beat overanalyzed masters. Now, if you are a mastering engineer, you must realize that when a song hits your inbox, it has been approved by the artist, the producer, the engineer, the manager, probably other people, maybe the label, trusted friends and family, the list goes on. So if you choose to make an EQ move, what you're essentially saying is, hey artist, hey engineer, hey producer, hey manager, your tonal choices were wrong and my tonal choices are right. Now I'm not saying that never happens, but given the truth of that statement, you have to be absolutely certain that any move that you make is helping, not hurting the record. So the third lesson that I've learned from Howie is to keep your processing super simple and minimal. If a song comes into you dark and you add six decibels of high-end gain with your $8,400 Manly Massive Passive Mastering Edition, the client is not going to say, Brightness! Wow, Will, you're a genius. I can't believe we didn't think of brightness. And wow, I can smell just how expensive that brightness really is. They're not gonna say that. They're gonna say, we made this dark. Why did you change that? Why did you make it bright? We wanted it dark. So as a mastering engineer, remember that your role is to listen and you either love it on first listen or you make a small tweak this way, small tweak that way, and you love it on the second lesson. Your goal is to coach the song, the artist, the production team across the finish line with as few moves as possible. So generally speaking, the way that I 
put this lesson into practice in my studio is a rule that I call the rule of two. I'm willing to push a song two decibels in any direction, brighter, darker, more limiting, more width, more, you know, 2 dB in any direction. But if it needs more than that, it's a call to the production team. Hey guys, I noticed that your song is a little bit ABC when compared to songs like XYZ. Is that intentional? Is that something you'd like me to adjust? See, that phone call to the artist, to the production team, is so much more important than a really expensive EQ. In conclusion, number one, create a short list of tools, learn them intimately, and use them on every master. Number two, Pomodoro your masters, uh, set a timer for yourself if you're struggling with taking too long with your masters, because more time per song equals less perspective, less income, and absolutely no guarantee of less revisions. Number three, keep it simple. Remember your role in all of this. Don't throw the kitchen sink at a song just to feed your ego. If it already sounds awesome, congratulate the artist on a job well done, bounce out the parts they need for distribution and pop the champagne and celebrate the finish of a record. So please leave a comment below with which one of these lessons resonates with you the most. Or if you disagree with any of these lessons, I'd love to hear why. If you like content like this, please subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Peace.